All right. So today's conversation is going to be all about mantras and it's going to be about how to restore confidence, strengthen willpower and improve performance and using a methodical and deliberate focus for using mantras effectively. So what I want to ask first, and let's just have a discussion on this because mantras is basically about words. Okay. Um, but what is the power of words? Why should we be so careful about the words we use to ourselves and the words we use with others and the words we use to narrate our reality? Why do words matter? What are your thoughts? I think words can be used to kind of center, center us on the direction we're going and what we think and how we interpret things. And I think there's a lot of dialogue that goes on inside your head that may distract you, but you can use words to kind of direct that instead of letting the subconscious kind of direct things. Um, I also think the words that we use can limit us. Um, so if you, um, if you use your words to define what something means and it's not in a way that helps you grow, it can keep your brain from you know, working to find a different path through something. So I do think you have to be really careful to use words that kind of empower you or help you find a direction forward as opposed to something that kind of boxes you in and would um, prevent you or prevent your brain from seeking other ways of, you know, solving a problem. Excellent. Yeah, love it. Love it. And, and words can trigger reactions in our brain, right? Um, you know, calling somebody a fool can make them immediately stand upright and be like, I'll show you, right? It can trigger reactions in the body. Like if somebody yells fire, like all of a sudden, like what, you know, like, um, also Dr. Andrew, uh, Newberg, a neuroscientist at Thomas Jefferson university and Mark Robert Waldman communication expert, they collaborated on the book. Words can change your brain. And in it, they write that a single word has the power to influence the expression of genes that regulate physical and emotional stress, right? Words matter. I mean, according to the Bible, all of creation started with words, you know? So it's like thoughts are things and words are like crystallized thoughts and they have a measurable power. So, you know, we want to be able to um oh we're gonna let patty in here i will plan it all right all right patty welcome to the call today we're talking about mantras <gasps> mantras <laughs> yes <laughs> i'm so excited i love right. mantras so we want to talk about we're, we're talking about the power of words words can heal us like medicine but words can also poison us you know words can be uh, a causal force in creation and creating our life and our destiny and words were the causal force in creation in the bible right like and even a lot of people will say om is a word that brought creation into being and there's lots of different it's a vibratory word and stuff like that so my question to you is why do words matter in your opinion if i were to ask you why do you think words matter mm -hmm. because i believe that um words tell our brain what to think so uh, we're in a deeper space so i believe that our words change our thoughts that's amazing yeah you're right words definitely tell our brain what to think so um we're gonna talk about mantras now what is a mantra charmaine do you want to just take a stab at it like what does it mean to you i'm not asking you to define it you're not a human dictionary here but i just want to know <laughs> what it means to you um, the way it works for me is sometimes it's, um, it's a, it's a memorized in my case, you know, either word or phrase, um, or sentence that I can use to redirect myself to a place that I want to be. So, especially if I'm fine, I'm struggling in a situation. If it's something that I have memorized and committed to memory. So it's easy to bring to my mind in that situation to help me redirect myself. That's an, an amazing way of describing a mantra. I love that. Patty, what about yourself? What is a mantra to you? What does it mean to you? It's a 
phrase that I repeat that helps me to get in the zone and in the space of where I need to be in the moment or for the day. Those are both two amazing definitions of mantra. I love it. What do you, what is, what do you say it is, Brendan? What do you say? I mean, I have a whole bunch of stuff for it. Let me just tell you like what I think it's, it's, it's yeah. like, it, I think it's training your mind to repeat a simple command or phrase over and over until it gets stuck and just plays in the background of your mind. Right. Kind of like how a song will play in the background of your mind. It, it can also be like an energy packet, something you can tell yourself that gives an instant boost. Right. Like I could just say, you know what? Things might be. Um... <laughs> and there's Brendan in the back of your brain. I love it. It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> so, so things might be like challenging and discouraging. And I could just be like, Patty always finds a way. She's done it before. She could do it again. And just repeating it, Patty always finds a way. Patty always finds a way. Using a mantra like that can just give you a boost. Like, you know what? You're right. We got this. Let's do this. Right? So it can be a way to do that. It's um, it, it In Sanskrit, it means sacred utterance. So it's essentially a word, phrase, thought, or even sound that's intended to provide clarity or spiritual guidance. Um, it's also been said that the root words are manus, which means mind and try, which means tool. So kind of like mind tool, but, uh, you know, it's basically, you know, as Charmaine kind of said, it's kind of like something you tell yourself that trains your mind to focus on a different thing when you need it to something that you want to dominate your awareness and reshape who you are. Right. It's, uh, you know, and then there's also like bad mantras too. Like sometimes people can have the mantra, I'm getting old. And they keep telling themselves that, oh, I bent over to tie up my shoe. I threw out my back. I'm getting old. I don't fit into these trousers anymore. I'm getting old. Like that can be a, a mantra too, but not necessarily a helpful one. So uh, here's the next question. Why do we need, or why, why do we benefit from the use of mantras? Like, why even bother taking this seriously? What's the benefit of this subject, of learning this and and applying this? Charmaine, what are your thoughts? Well, like you, like we were saying before, I think it helps redirect you. So when you were talking about things like leaning over to tie your shoe and you're like, oh, I'm old. But if every time you hear the word old, it takes me back to what Joel said his dad says, old age is a mental disease I'm not interested in. So if every time I hear the word old, and I might say those things, but my yeah. brain says, no, this is what it is. Mm -hmm. It helps shift your mindset and makes you realize, no, it's not about tying my shoe or like the word fear. That's a trigger word for me. So when I hear fear, I think fear's a liar, you know, and that comes out immediately for me every time I hear the word fear. So you're like, it, it's almost in reflex responses in my head when I hear certain words. And so in that sense, it can redirect you and get you back to who you want to be without a lot of effort on your part. Because usually when you kind of get stuck in some of these other mindsets, it can be hard to get yourself out. But if you have these instinctive responses to certain words or certain things, that can catapult you out of the, um, a, a, like an incorrect mindset or a bad mood or whatever it happens to be. Love it. Love it. So basically we benefit from rewiring our thinking from the negative mantras that got stuck in our head. You know, whether it's something we heard in childhood, maybe a teacher or, a, or an adult said, you'll never amount to anything. And then it's like, boom, now that became your mantra. And every time you think about trying in life, you think I better not because I'm never going to amount to anything. So sometimes these unhelpful statements get stuck. And mantras can help us break out of that spell of suffering that we don't even understand we're under, right? So love it, love it. It can get us out of those limiting um, thoughts that are repeating in our heads. Patty, what are your thoughts? What's the benefit of, of delving into this subject? I think mantras create a positive loop and it cr also creates um, feelings and emotions that then turn into positive beliefs. So the yeah. benefit of mantra is that it will take you from a place of where you are into a place of positivity, into a place of a belief system that you can then operate out of. Yeah, love it, love it. So it's like a new habit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. perfect, perfect. So it's and I'm struggling a little bit with the whole negative mantra thing, but maybe that's because 
you know, and some of what you were saying, it might come from a teacher or somebody who'd said something to you before, but I kind of view mantras as something you've chosen versus something that was maybe trained into you by someone else. So a mantra you can choose and you choose to inject that into your life. And that's the intention here today. We're going to do this with intention. The stuff that's playing on auto repeat in the back of our heads, some of it got stuck in there by accident. We're going to put some intentional stuff in there and purify it and refine it. Exactly. Love it. <laughs> so this is a means to shift your inner world, to program yourself with the right thoughts and attitudes to succeed at what you do, because it's all about making yourself do the thing you have to do when it want to be, when it ought to be done, whether you like it or not, right. In order to fulfill your purpose. And, and I also think, you know, that which you focus on, you become. So if you start to focus on your possibility and potential, then you start to become your possibility and potential. If you focus on your limitations and you're repeating that, you become those limitations. It's almost like you are what you eat. It's like you are what you believe and tell yourself, right? So <clears throat> I think it also is good as a mental reset. We need to remind ourselves who we are and what we're capable of. Also, your psychology becomes your physiology. So when you start to relax the mind and invigorate the mind, that can have a relaxing and invigorating effect on your body. It's like, we know that stress has a negative effect on the body. It impairs immunity, digestion, metabolism, healing and recovering all in recovery, all those different things. So we want to use that to a positive benefit, how psychology influences physiology. And, uh, it ultimately use it to promote growth over defeatism, right? Because that's where we can get stuck in a lot of defeatism with the things we tell ourselves. So I think those are some good things. It can help us stay focused positive can potentially promote a beneficial heart change you know like anything else to you either you want to add to why we should be doing this well um let's think about this next how shall we choose a mantra what should we consider if you're gonna choose something you want to repeat to yourself and you want to to kind of be playing in the background of your mind, how should, shall you make that choice? What should be your deciding criteria? Charmaine, what do you think? Um, well, some of it, I think you need to know where you want to go or what it is that you believe. I also think it's helpful to know what you're struggling with at the time and what it is you need to combat. Because having a mantra that you're not particularly challenged by won't necessarily get exercised as much either. Mm hmm I agree. I think something to counter whatever your fear statement is or whatever your fear is to have. And I think it needs to be a short statement and it needs to be a powerful statement. Um, but it's got to be able to counter whatever your fear loop is. I, uh, <clears throat> you two are incredible. Like that just the way you just define that is so succinct and inspiring, by the way. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I agree with both of it. I couldn't have said it any better. And I think we could also consider something that might help us for a foreseeable obstacle or foreseeable challenge that's coming up in, in addition to a current challenge, maybe just a one sentence. I think a good thing to consider is in order to be the person I want to be, what do I have to believe is true? Right, so we can... We can come at it that way. We can meditate on the most meaningful qualities to you that you want to embody. Uh, and then, you know, usually you might even pick three to five mantras. So let's go into a number of different categories. And I've got a bunch of mantras I, I've collected from each of the category. And I'll read out some of them uh, for each of the category. And then both of you can just throw out some other ideas you have. How does that sound? And, and the whole goal here is make notes of the ones you like. It's like if you throw enough spaghetti at the wall, some of it's going to stick. So all we're going to do is run through a whole bunch of different mantras and anything you really like that you're like, ooh, I really want to em embody that, then just write it down. Okay. Or make note of it or even mention what you like. How does that sound? So. And I've already got my note. You've already what? <laughs> I already have my mantras up. Oh, you do? Do you yeah. want to start off? When are you yeah. talking about? 
Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. This one's from Tony Robbins, and it says, in every day and every way, I'm getting better and better. Or in every day and every way, I'm getting stronger and stronger. Or I'm getting smarter and smarter. You can put whatever words you want in it, but that's a Tony Robbins one. Um, I'm looking good. I'm feeling good. I ought to be in Hollywood. Yeah. It's good for self-esteem. Get you up for the day. I got my makeup and my hair done. I'm like, I'm looking good. I'm feeling good. I ought to be in Hollywood. It helps me when I'm going to go in and speak, you know, somewhere. Uh, so I always say, looking good. I'm feeling good. I ought to be in Hollywood. Um, I am La Fuega. You guys know La Fuega. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Your yeah. nickname means fire. Yeah. Uh, I am La Fuega. I can blaze through anything because I am La Fuega. So I do that one. Um, I love everyone and everyone loves me. Especially if I'm going into uh, depositions or something like that, or I'm going into a bad situation where I'm having to be a person that, you know, is in, in an intense environment. I can, hey, I love everybody and everybody loves me. Um, I've got this. I've got this. Like, it's just a natural, hey, I got this. Um, I have a friend of mine who always, anytime something comes up and says, hey, can you do this? He goes, too easy too easy like that's his thing too easy like everything is too easy oh i love um, that so uh or i'll i'll say i'll walk into the office and i go easy day you know no matter what it is it's an easy day uh that's another one i have um let's see uh i am more than enough i am more than enough i'm not enough i'm more than enough to whatever it is that i need to walk into i always say I'm not just enough. I'm more than enough for this. So those are a few. But I got a list because, you know, sometimes you forget. And I will take a uh, red lipstick and I will put it on my mirror. If I'm like having a week and I'll put, I've got this. And I'll put a little heart, you know, <laughs> or something like that. But I, I have cheap red lipstick from the dollar store. And that's what I use it for in my. Uh... Oh my gosh. You know what? You really emanate the energy of those mantras. I have to say, <laughs> I'm like, you're not just speaking off the cuff on mantras. You like, like, I feel like they really have, like, you just described your ingredients, Patty Baker. <laughs> hey. like, I can see how that's all mixed in there and add a little <laughs> dash of La Fuega. To I am enough. I got this. I'm more than enough. Blah blah. It's like there's your Patty Baker recipe. I love I love mantras. Uh, once I you know gr grabbed onto those through Tony Robbins, it, it was a great gig for me. I love them. I love it. Love it. Love it. Uh, Charmaine, do you have any mantras? Just general purpose category mantras for now uh, that you like that you care to share? Well, fear is a liar is one that I say a lot because. Um, it, like I said, mine tend to center on words and I get triggered off of words. Um, faithfulness in many instances is based on a fear of losing. Yeah. Um, a lot of times they're things I've read in books and they pop up when I need them, <laughs> you know, but yeah. Um, and a lot of the Tony Robbins ones, I mean, that's, there's a lot there that comes back to me at times that I need it, but I love that Patty has a list. I'm, I'm working on my own list now, right? <laughs> no, we're, that's all you need to do. Like come up with a list of your top five or 10 yeah. from today's discussion. So I have, a, I have a bunch that I'll share for general purpose category. Okay. okay. Here is one. I am love. Whatever you say <laughs> after I am is powerful to your psyche. And what more of a powerful force in the world than love so another one is life loves me right it's similar to what patty said everyone loves me i love everybody right uh you know you could say i'm on an ever-changing journey and i love learning from it mm. right i'm on an ever-changing journey and i love learning from it here's one for that's good to help us accept reality so we can work with reality how it is it's to say everything I need comes to me at the perfect time. Everything I need comes to me at the perfect time. And sometimes we need to be reminded that the things we need aren't necessarily comfortable or fun, but it gets us our, uh, it gets our attention and prompts us to grow. Uh, this is one that's a good compliment to the how to trust the universe and the knowing conversation is to say, I am loved beyond words and without end. I am loved beyond words and without end, right? So those are a bunch of just good uh, 
general purpose ones. Sometimes I might say, I am here and now. Or, uh, you know, I had a client and, and I recently gave them, be here now, then be love now. And it, it, those are just two book titles from Ram Dass, actually. So uh, anyway, those are the general purpose categories here. Okay, so we're going to go into some specific categories for mantras. And it's important for us to identify what categories are most relevant to us at this time. The first category we're going to go into is confidence builders. A lot of times we need more confidence and mantras can help. Another one is for overcoming obstacles. Another category is for relationship harmony, um, spiritual mantras that kind of uplift us, mantras for healing or mission and career affirmation, money and wealth, like, and then we'll talk about how to get the most of it out of our mantras. But those are some of the categories. So um, let's talk about confidence building mantras. So I have a bunch that I've used with pro and Olympic athletes I've worked with. Because we want to, you know, to get them to perform better, we want to use mantras that really boost uh, confidence, right? So um, I've got a bunch I'll share with you. Uh, do any of you have some confidence building mantras you care to share? Anything you thought of or you heard that you kind of like? Well, just I've got this. I can do this. I mean, they're simple. Anything that comes up, I say, oh, I got this, or I can do this. It builds you know confidence what? for me. I think I, if I can make a request, could you just share I got this for every category? Because I think it applies to every category we need. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. So when I say, who's got an idea for this category? I want you to say, I got this. I got this. <laughs> All right. So we could say something like, um, uh, you know, so-and-so, your name, right, opens their mind to the wisdom of the universe, which guides them and unifies them with a power greater than the individual self, right? Okay, so one of the things that I say is, and, and this is um, just memorizing scripture verses. Yeah. So I, I always say, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Perfect. That's a, that's a beautiful one. That's a beautiful one. You could also say, you know, Patty Baker is made in the image of God and therefore has limitless power and potential, just like God, right? Anything like that can work really well. I love it. Um, for people who are less, have less of a affinity to religion, like, mm -hmm. but are more into like spirituality. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Then I may use, I am indestructible consciousness as one, right? Because we want to speak to the level that they're at and respect everyone at whatever level they're at. Um, one that I use that it pretty much goes over well with anybody. It's one of my favorite ones of all time. It's divine love is guiding me. I am always taken care of. Like that one is just heartwarming, right? So I like that one as well. You could also say I'm in charge of how I feel and today I'm choosing happiness, right? Which could be another good one. What about for overcoming obstacles? Overcoming obstacles. This is a common category because a lot of times people have obstacles in front of them and that's why they're struggling. And we want to have um, mantras that reinforce our possibility and potential. Patty, I'm going to start with you. Do you have one, maybe three letters long or three words long? That's a mantra that helps us overcome obstacles. I've got this. That's what I use. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That is so good. <laughs> that is so good. Chris, do you have any thoughts on this category? I think for things for getting over obstacles is to embrace the obstacle and embrace the angst that it's bringing you as it will make you stronger. And as you learn to work with your angst, it has less power over you. Mm -hmm. So that's about, well, 
Well, dealing with obstacles and many different obstacles, it depends on where your mindset is at and where your physical and mental energy is. Yep. Sometimes you just have to go through the pain of the losses. You have to go through the pain of the setbacks, the pains of going backwards and not going forwards. At some point, the energy will reverse onto itself, but you just have to realize that when you're facing an obstacle, this obstacle might be teaching you something different, teaching you how to go through the pain, have those setbacks. How you handle those setbacks is what changes things. The setbacks changes who you are. The setbacks make you who you are. Excellent. So how about we say something like this? Chris is strengthened by challenge. The more he is challenged, the tougher he becomes. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. I love that. I love that whole theme. I might reinforce to somebody, I might say, you know, Charmaine always finds a way she has before and will again. Or I might say everything Patty Baker needs is within her. Now, everything Patty Baker needs is within her now. She's the master of her life. She has everything she needs to enjoy the here and now, right? So yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of ones. We could just say that our obstacles only make us our story better. We could say, you know, uh, Chris will persist until Freeze. he succeeds. <laughs> did I freeze again? Yeah. No. I, I just said the best mantras ever, never to be repeated ever again. <laughs> ever again. Ever. Never going to repeat The universe them. won't let them out, right? <laughs> right. That's divine love for you. <laughs> All right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So um, the next one we'll go into is like relationship harmony. Okay. So sometimes that's a priority for people is relationship harmony. And sometimes they need a mantra to just kind of get them focused in that category. So um, why don't I read a bunch and then all of you can tell me what you like or add something new. How about that? just take some of the pressure off. So here might be one. I might say, you know, uh, Patty is a master at making other people feel good about themselves and be happy. Great mantra reminds you who you are. I might say Charmaine is a master at making other people want to be their best. If you just keep repeating to that to yourself, Charmaine is a master at making other people want to be their best. That can harmonize relationships, right? Um, we could also say something like, what else do we got? Uh, I love myself for the potential within me. Because self-love often helps us harmonize in relationships. So if we say, I love myself for the potential within me, I find that's a good way to uh, bridge the gap with self-acceptance. And uh, you could say, I am happy in the good fortune of all, even more than in my own, for in my happiness for them lies inner freedom. Because a lot of times we view the success of others as a threat or um, we're comparing ourselves. So we need to train ourselves to be happy for the success of others. That can really help us out. And that one comes from Swami Kriyananda in his book, uh, Affirmations for self-healing, which was my favorite affirmation book, by the way, if I'm to reference some of my sources here on tonight's call. Uh, anyone have any thoughts on relationship affirmations? I, I just, a lot in times for me, it's difficult. It's temperament, it's personality, but it's difficult for me to get into public spaces where I don't know anybody, if I, especially if it's a marketing event or, you know, meet and greet. So I always just say, I make friends easily. I make friends easily. I, I make friends that. easily. I really make friends easily. And then I'm making friends before it's the night's over. I love that. That's great. That's so you too. Right? I can tell you, Patty Baker doesn't happen by accident. There's been some- <laughs> On intense... purpose. I live on purpose. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you could also say one is one I like is I'm here to be a friend to all. Right. And that gets us focused on relationship harmony for sure. 
I'm not sure mine sounds as neat as what you guys are saying, but yeah. I think a lot of times in the moment, I, I want to think about, am I choosing my actions based on this moment or for the long-term good of the relationship? Mm. So you, you, I might think also, it's, you might also say, don't judge the moment. Yeah, that's another good way to say it. Yeah, don't judge the moment. Because a lot of times in relationships, we might judge the moment and overreact, right? Yes. You know, you might remind yourself the best way to get love is to give it. And I think that's a good mantra because a lot of times we're, we're approaching it, expecting it to be given first, right? But as you give, you shall receive. So I think it's like the best way to get love is to give it. In 15 seconds, you'll have a new friend. So, um, yeah, now how about uh, spiritual mantras? Spiritual <gasps> mantras. Me, me, me. Patty, Patty, go ahead. <laughs> I've got this. Oh, no, wait, that's not, that's not for this one. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, for me, it's really, I believe in the breath of life, right? Like the divine creator has given us the breath of life. Breath has been breathed in. And when we breathe that in, we're breathing in life. And so... And I think of the inward as Yahweh. Mm. And so it's a breath. Um, it's a sound. And so for me, it's dialing into my spiritual because I'm focused on the breath, but it's also a mantra in that it's part of the I am, you know, the powerful statement you talked about earlier. So um, uh, that's that's kind of where I am on that. Love but it. it it hits my spiritual, um, it, it, it allows me to be in a space of spiritual oneness with my creator. And, and I believe in the breath in Yahweh. So that's how it is. Love it. Love it. I had a, I had one I used to teach when I get people to do Qigong. Yeah. Uh, breath in, I am receiving love. Breath out, I am giving love. Yeah. Right. And many religions will say God is love. Mm -hmm. So that can be a, a process of doing that. Um, and also that helps out um, in another aspect too, for those who understand chakras, mm -hmm. you know, just aligning energies um, with the divine and just focusing on the light coming in and light going out like that. Yeah. I think uh, there's another one I like uh, from Swami Kriyananda, and it is, I am a child of eternity. I'm ageless. I'm deathless. I'm the changeless spirit at the heart of all mutation. So it kind of talks about the real aspect of the self that's been kind of in behind there witnessing everything as our bodies have gone from baby to child to adult and everything, just reminding ourselves of of our real nature, that we're not a, a mortal being, but an immortal soul, it can be something that can help us with spiritual amnesia, right? Because a lot of times we just get too worldly, you know? So I think that can really help. There's one very simple mantra that is easy to use for spiritual purposes. And it's this, my life is guided. That's it. Just my life is guided. Um, and that can help people to just let go and trust a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, another one I like from Camilla Silva in the book, the flawless mirror is saints always saints always. And it's just a thought that just kind of gets your, it leads to more beneficial thoughts that follow it up. Well, what does that mean? Saints always, right? It just gets your, your thoughts flowing in a very harmonious direction. Um, uh, Mary Kretzman had a mantra that she wrote about in her book and it was God, Christ and guru thou art with me as a, as a spiritual mantra, Michael Singer used, uh, I'm always fine. I'm always fine. I'm always fine. You repeat it three times. And I thought that was a, a beautiful one as well. So, um, 
Asha, Asha Praver said, whatever happens, God and I will find a way to go forward in perfect harmony. Like I thought that was a beautiful one as well. So those are some of the ones that I have that I've kind of collected. But uh, any thoughts on any of them you like? Anything you want to add, Charmaine? Um, it is well with my soul. I always like that one because oh. it, it makes me find harmony with that moment. Um, and then I, I've shared this one before too, but the only things that matter in life are those that matter in eternity. I like that one a lot too. It makes me see like the bigger picture of things instead of getting stuck in a moment. Yeah. Live with one foot in eternity. I love that. That's really good too. Chris, any thoughts on those? Uh, oh, there we go. All right. Back. Um, spiritual mantras. I think are, no, I really don't. Okay. No problem. So why don't we go into, uh, so there's some other categories we could go into. We're not going to go into every category tonight. Mission and career mantras. You know, you might say, I'm here to live, love, and leave a legacy or something along those lines. You know, healing mantras, which could be, you know, uh, I love every cell of my body or um, it could be the hearing, healing power of spirit is throwing, flowing through all the cells of my body we could have money and wealth mantras right which could be i constantly attract opportunities that create more money i'm worthy of making more money i'm open and receptive to the wealth life offers me you know um we could have skill building mantras which could be like chris will work harder than anyone else to be successful you know he wants to succeed as bad as he wants to breathe that could be something that could really kind of take us to the next level. You know, it could be uh, Charmaine always gives the most to help her teammates be the best, which can really help you be a team player. You know, it could Steve's be trying to get in, by the way. Do you see him? Oh, there he is. Yeah. All right, yeah, Steve, we're, we're talking about mantras. Months. What are some of your favorite mantras, ways to like pump yourself up, things you'll tell yourself? or repeat in order to program yourself for success. I'm grabbing my uh, journal here so I can pull it out. Perfect, and while you do that, I'll explain the importance of this subject. The importance of this subject is, if you wanna succeed at anything, you can't leave it to accident. If you wanna be a good piano player, take lessons. You wanna be good at hockey, take hockey practice. You wanna be good at human, don't leave it to accident. Program yeah. yourself to succeed at being human. Mantras are a way. It is basically repeating your success instructions to help you be the kind of person you want to be to live the life you want to live. So it's a way to just kind of anchor ourselves in what we want to do while we're here. Okay, so nice. what are some mantras you have to share with the group? Well, I got a whole list here. I'll just give you a couple. So um, everything you want is on the other side of fear. So I love that one. Um, we did bridge jumping and my, my uh, son's girlfriend was all standing on the edge. And I'm like, just go, just go, just go, just go. Like nothing's different than three minutes ago. Just go, just go. Yeah. Like, what are you waiting? Just go. So everything you want is on the other side of fear. Um, life happens for me, not to me. That was a huge one from our group's section of UPW um, that I got. Yeah. Um, Swim in the deep end. That's kind of one that I just kind of came up with. That is the extension of, you know, life begins outside your comfort zone mm -hmm. um, kind of thing. Just get out there, you know, in the deep water where it's scary. Um, another one is never pass on an opportunity for adventure. Like, say, trying to ride your bike across a river, maybe, which I successfully did twice. Yeah. So that was good on Saturday. Um, you know, one, one I got from you, Brendan, quite a while ago, uh, many months back was, I don't know what's good for me. And we talked about that in relation to the universe and, you know, trying to put thoughts out there, put good intentions, put good karma. Um, but along with that was, you know, the, the universe is infinite and so is my ignorance. Of, <laughs> you know, we, we just don't know. That, right? that I mean, one stuck with you. 
Yeah, I love it. Those are those are two that I read. I try to read every day um, on those. One that I I'll, I think maybe finish up with is um, that good is the enemy of great. You know, good enough is not good enough. You got to be great, not good. So I I like that one. Of it's not, you can't just slide it in, right? You can't just phone it in. You got to make it happen, like you just said. Love it. Those are great, great mantras. So um, let's talk about how to reinforce mantras. So part one is figure out which ones make sense for you at your current point in your journey right? Like you said, I don't know what's best for me. I need that right now because sometimes I think I know what's best and I struggle with my frustrations. I need to remind myself that the universe is infinite and so is my ignorance because otherwise I think I have a better idea of how life should be playing out than how life is playing out. And now I'm stuck in this gap between how things are and how I think they should be. And I'm getting pulled apart by this reality gap, right? So if that's the case, we might need it at that time. So how shall we reinforce the mantras? Um, I'll, I'll start with some ideas out there. One is hit the 10,000 mark. Okay, hit the 10,000 mark. According to Indian thought, once we state something 10,000 times, it becomes a mantra, a frequently repeated thought form that molds and shapes our future. That comes from Jack Canfield and Mark Victor Hansen. Okay, hit the 10,000 mark. You should know that you've repeated it 10,000 times. Another thing is, you know, um, you could have it on your phone. You could repeat it before you're participating in a sport game or before you're going to work. You could listen to it on a voice recording. If you do, there are apps where you can change up like the accent, the volume, Mm. the tonality, the more variety you hear a message with the deeper it gets into your, your thinking, you know, you could put, put it in various locations. Like I had somebody who had on their desk, I am responsible, you know, like their mantra so that they're always taking extreme ownership. You know, you could have it in the bathroom mirror with cheap red licks lipstick, right? Patty, (laughs) you know, like, uh, (laughs) You can repeat it before going to bed works really well. Um, I like to repeat some on nature walks while touching the different segments of my fingers to kind of like, so, and I will just do like a simple one. All right. Usually a spiritual one when I'm going on nature walks. Right. And, and my whole thing is I'm repeating a spiritual mantra until I encounter um, wildlife of some sort. And then I'm in the moment with the wildlife and connecting with it. And then I'm going back to spiritual mantra, right? Um, So that could be a way to do it. Uh, Just repeating it when you're doing anything, because you want to carry those words into the subconscious, Uh, even walking to work. Um, Try to do it like 200 times a day for four weeks. Could be a good way to start out. And then... uh, you know, you could also consider, um, what else do I have here? Yeah, those are some basic ideas I'll start us off with. I'll go into mantra success tips as a different subject next, but do any of you have any ideas on reinforcing them and practicing them that you might add? I have a good one. (laughs) Okay, what's that? Your password at work. (laughs) I type it in like a million times a day (laughs) and it it doesn't even have to be the whole phrase. It could be like the letters as you go through, but you think it every time you type it, it's a really good way to drill it into your brain. (laughs) That's awesome. (laughs) And that should make for a strong password too, right? (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Yeah. Cause all those hackers, they're too negative to even think that way. (laughs) And this isn't totally practical for us, but if they would just put it in certain movies or if it's from a movie that you like, it'll get drilled in there. I'm thinking of you, Steve, you know, know. having a conversation the whole day where we just talk movie lines or lyrics to songs. If it's embedded in somewhere and you can pull it out of there, you will not forget. (laughs) I just, I asked everyone while we were camping every night, what movie are we watching tonight? I'll just start quoting it. So we watched (laughs) Dumb and Dumber. We watched, uh, 
Oh, brother, where art thou? Like, I watch these in my head all the time. It's awesome. Yes. That's amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> so, Steve, here is your challenge, okay? Your new password on all your devices should be, I am extremely good looking. I know it's going to take you a long time to type it in, but when you explain it to everybody and what your password is, you're going to feel like the coolest dude in the room. I got to try to show you something. Hold on. You may know what this is. You just calm down. <laughs> I've done some serious mountain biking in the last couple of weeks. I did, I did two the day before my birthday and the day after my birthday. I did 22 miles off road both days. I climbed over 6,700 feet. And then I swam in the ocean, ate seafood, and then played volleyball for two and a half hours. So. Well, in the words of uh, Patty Baker, those calves are mooing. <laughs> Patty Baker. Calves for, that dude's got calves for days. Like, <laughs> my gosh, my gosh. Um, all right, let's go on to mantra success tips. So here are some things you need to make sure that you apply to your mantras. Number one, you must believe them. Okay. For example, if you say, I am a millionaire, your subconscious mind is going to yell, no, that's not true. You're repeating it and your subconscious mind is fighting you on it. It's not going to work, but you can say, I have the potential and ability to be a millionaire, for example, right? So you don't want to go into a war with your subconscious mind that knows better. You don't want to say, try to fool yourself here. It has to be something you believe. Okay, so that's a big one. Number two is you have to assimilate it into your atoms, the atoms of your being and know it in your bones. And you're going to take, it's going to take willpower and concentration and to create attunement with those words so that, you know, really repeat them like firmly with intensity and sincerity um, until they become a part of you, right? Just keep repeating it over and over and over, you know, don't affirm a weakness. I'll give you an example of one. That I know this is going to be uh, controversial, but rather than reciting pray for us sinners, it might be better to say pray for us who love you. You know what I'm saying? Because we're not affirming weakness. Why keep us affirming sinfulness and reminding ourselves of it, right? So that comes from the book... Um, light bearer Swami Kriyananda again so another thing is you know be willing to change your ideas on your mantras you know many people are very reluctant to shift their plans or ideas uh use them as they're specific to the challenges you're facing you know I also tell people it's best to put pen to paper and physicalize them by writing them out initially because otherwise, if you're, if you're just repeating it, it's like painting over dirt. The minute you start writing it out and putting pen to paper, it sticks better. Write it out in your favorite color, right? But it's like, you know how the teachers would get you to write out lines like the beginning of the Simpsons episode, you know, Bart I will not talk in class. I will not talk in class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's almost <laughs> like just, just do this like over and over again, like with your mantra right? Like just repeating it over and over again and writing it out like that. Like I would do like 200 reps a day. You know, you are literally programming yourself. You are what you tell yourself, right? Like it's, um, I would audit them. So if some, if I say to each of you, look, I need you to come up with your top five right now, then I'm going to say, all right, with each of these five scale of one to 10, how much do you believe it? Okay. If it's not a 10, it's not right for you just yet. You got to get it to a 10 out of 10 on your belief or try something more appropriate. So if you say, I'm a gold medal athlete because you want to win a gold medal, I'll say, how much do you believe it? They're like, well, seven or eight. I'm not yet, but I'm believing I am. I just haven't done it yet. And I'm like, yeah, and your subconscious is fighting you. Why don't you just say, I have the potential to be a gold medal athlete? Just affirm something realistic here, right? So I do an audit on it with people, right? So it has to be satisfying to your consciousness. 
Um, make it about the present moment. You know, variety in speech helps changing voice, volume, and accent. You know, um, then I would also say tie it into your breathing when you can, as Patty discussed with Yahweh, she ties it into her breathing. Uh, and what else? Brad, what, do you, what do you think about uh, like recording your voice, like recording yourself <laughs> saying these? I've kind of thought about that, yeah, but I yeah. think the sound of my voice, but part of me thinks if I in her, she in, will not in, fail. Uh, like a, a time to low way. There's a that, special breed of warrior helps, ready so. to answer God's call. A common person with an uncommon mm -hmm. desire to succeed. Forged by adversity, mm -hmm. she stands alongside God's chosen for special operations to serve the kingdom of God, God's people, and protect the faith. As an ambassador for the kingdom of God and a warrior to protect the faith and defend the widows and the <laughs> orphans. I do not advertise the nature of my work nor seek recognition for my actions. I voluntarily accept the inherent hazards of my purpose, placing the welfare and security of others before my own. I serve God with honor. The ability to control my emotions and my actions, regardless of circumstances, sets me apart from others. Uncompromising integrity is my standard. My character and honor are steadfast. My word is my promise. I expect to lead and be led. In the absence of orders, I will take charge. Lead my team God has given me and accomplish the mission. I lead by example in all situations. I will never quit. I persevere and I thrive on adversity. I am physically and mentally stronger than the enemy. If knocked down, I will get back up every time. I will draw on every remaining ounce of strength to protect my team and to accomplish our mission. I am never out of the fight. I demand discipline and I expect innovation. The lives of my teammates and the success of our mission depend on me. My technical skill, tactical proficiency, and attention to detail. My training is never complete. I train for spiritual warfare and I fight to win. I stand ready in the full armor of God to bring the full spectrum of combat power to bear in order to achieve my mission and the goals established for the kingdom of God. The execution of my duties will be swift and guided by the very principles I serve to defend. Brave Christians have fought and died for the kingdom of God and the faith I am bound to uphold. I stand upon the shoulders of the warriors who have gone before me. In the worst of conditions, I will not fail my God, for he is with me wherever I go. Every day, morning and night, morning and night. If you ain't speaking it into yourself, you can't own it and you can't operate from it. You can try and manufacture it, but you've got to manifest it and it's got to come from within your being. And like Brennan said, if you can't own what you're saying, then you got to put it into a space where you can until you can next level it up. So this goes back to what I was saying to Steve earlier, though, about putting stuff in a movie. I bet you know every word of that in order. You don't have to play it to know it and to repeat it. And you've created your own movie with your own movie lines that you can hear in your head and you can hear it in your voice in your head too, saying it. I can't believe how good that was. I'm like blown away. I was like, what? I was like, I was like, whoa, that was a wisdom bomb. And I was like, whoa, that's a wisdom bomb. I'm like, whoa, three in a row. And then I'm like, whoa, four in a row. And then I'm like, five. I'm like, this is just not stopping. Like, this is just on fire. Like, I am like in shock at how good that was. And but, uh, listen, there's a lot of time invested in my mind work, right? We, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's you've got to spend time with your mind. If you don't, you you're taking this thing with you wherever you go, and it's part of your intrinsic cardiac nervous system. It's part of the neuroscience. You know, we have 40 million neurons firing up, and our heart rate sends those signals, and we've got we've got to be in a place where we can where we're easily driven by fear 
to be able to step into that space with courage. And if we're our, if we're not, if we're not set up for it, we'll fail in it every time because the fear, our fear is, is a black belt where we're a white belt because it's been, those fear loops have been playing for so long. And now all of a sudden we're introducing something new into it. It's going to take a while um, to, it, it, I think it's going to take a while to, to put together. And that's why I think smaller, powerful sentences work great. I got this too easy, but then you can put, you know, this is a two minute loop for me. I can't memorize it, but I can get it into my brain space and allow it to work. You know, your heart has a brain. Uh, it's called the it in memorized cardiac now. service system, right? Mm -hmm. You do have it memorized now, though, from listening to it. Oh, yeah. And this is also why Patty's reaction to when we said mantras earlier was so epic, <laughs> because she owns this topic. <laughs> I love it. I, I think it's a great topic for tonight, Brendan. Thank you so much for bringing it. Well, thank you for sharing that profound mantra with us. It was so good. I couldn't <laughs> believe it. So many powerful lines in it. I'm like, whew. Like, I, I, you know, Patty, you would have, if you ever went on online dating and made that your bio, <laughs> <laughs> like if you were on Christian Mingle and that was your bio, oh my goodness, your inbox would have been on fire. <laughs> but I will say this, you know, you've got to be able to put your, your creed really is that's, that's not just a mantra, but that's my creed. And you've got to be able to, to read your creed and be able to read it in front of the mirror and, and know what you're doing in it and with it. And you've got to own that physically and, and physiologically, like you said, Brendan. Yeah, I love it. Like get clear on your mission, then remember your mission, mm -hmm. right? Because that's a lot of times we're not clear on what we're out here fighting for in life, whether we're fighting for spiritual warfare, as you said it, to benefit those god thirsty souls and benefit suffering humanity and whatever or if we're here fighting to just have the best car on our street you know like if we don't pay attention to it we will succumb to a weak mission we will succumb to whim and impulse that's how self-will often plays out right when we're rolling around in these body vehicles and the natural you know are being being so susceptible to the influences around us, like it can pull us off of the importance of what we're really here to do, right? Mm -hmm. So I love it. I love it. That was great. That was great. And All it's right. not just memorized in your head. That's that's in your soul now. You know, every part of your being knows those words. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I was going to say that too. I was going to say, this isn't just a body thing. If you think of yourself as having three bodies, like a physical body, an astral body, and a causal body, like what you're doing is you're programming your consciousness that goes above the physical body, which, you know, gets tossed away like an old banana peel when you die and you go on to something else. Right. But what you're doing is you're doing work on what matters most by affecting your consciousness. And you take that into your next realm of existence, even beyond this life. You take with you who you've become in your inner self. And what you're doing is you're intentionally crafting who you want to be and who you are rather than leaving it to chance like leaving anything to chance on planet earth this is the insane asylum of our solar system why leave anything to chance here you know like we have such capacity to be victims of our own ignorance you know all right why don't we go into uh final thoughts key takeaways from tonight it's been all about mantras so hopefully everyone's got some ideas on things they like or maybe some inspiration on how they might move forward to live their best life by applying these mind tools. Uh, why don't we just share some final thoughts? Uh, Chris, you want to start? Sure. Um, I think the mantras are important. I think um, Patty's example is exemplary of what a mantra truly is and what it should be. What we hear about mantras is more fortune cookie like. This is like, what part of the military did you serve in? You can feel the energy just from the recording, never mind her actually saying it live. 
that energy is what powers her. It is basically like when you see an Iron Man, the little uranium thing that powers him, that entire mantra powers her. That is basically her operating system. We read about this stuff, we talk about this stuff, but this is my first time actually ever seeing it in action at a A plus level, at 100% level. And I think that was the best example of what a mantra truly is. So it's hard for me to have some takeaways from it, except to gush all over what Patty just did. And I want to see that movie. When other people want to see that movie, you know you did that right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, love it. Love it. Steve, key takeaways, final thoughts. What do you think? Uh, I think on mine, you know, I, I, what I just drew on, I have laminated on both sides. There's one in my journal, one in my planner, one at my work desk. And I think the takeaway is to just read it multiple times, not just like in the morning and in the evening, but try to read it throughout the day, you know, take a minute, breathe, take a step away, whatever, and just try to get the frequency up so that, you know, I can get that driven down deeper um, instead of just kind of rushing through to check it off, you know, like a, a task uh, to just take, take a minute, breathe it in, say it, and make sure that it's all worded in a way that I don't have to fight subconscious on it and I can internalize it. Okay. Great, great. Um, Charmaine, any thoughts, final thoughts, key takeaways? Yeah, I think I need to formalize some of my mantras. I mean, I've written stuff down over the years and they always come to mind when I need them. But unless I'm in that moment where I'm struggling with something, sometimes that's harder to bring to mind. And I think, um, you know, a lot of mine key off certain words. And, you know, when a certain word comes up, those things come to mind. But I think it would be good to have it as a reference and to read through it daily, even though I've committed them to memory. Um, I need a trigger point at this point and having it where I didn't need a trigger point. If I listened to it as much as Patty's listened to hers and I could just recite the whole thing on command, you know, that would be amazing. And, and I think there's some value to either hearing it in your own voice, or if you don't like your voice, Steve, have someone you love record it for you, <laughs> <laughs> but then it still gets drilled in. I mean, it gets drilled in the same way and maybe even a little bit differently too, because that person also has meaning to you. Um, so it can drill it in, in a different way. And, and I think like um, Brendan was saying too, changing the tone or changing the voice or the accent or whatever can make it mean something different. But um, I, I just, Patty, it was really powerful. It's nice to hear it, especially with the passion in which you read it. And I heard La Fuega. <laughs> she lives. <laughs> I, I, you know, I loved it so much. I want to see a written copy of it or something or get the recording. I'm like, I, I'm like, that. that is so inspiring, that message, Patty. Thank you. Like, well, so good. You know, I think we can systematically destroy the fear loop when we can conquer it through mantras. Yeah. And that takes courage to be able to get out of the rational mind and into the whole mind, right, of our consciousness, because we can tell our mind to think what we want it to think. And we can do that by the power of the word. And, um, and that's what mantra, you know, comes down to, because all of the energy that we are expending on trying to extinguish fear, we can use through mantra to empower us. And we have the choice in how we use that, how we expend that energy. And mantras can help us to harness and focus on our goals to truly live a life on purpose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Love it, love it. It is like, for those who are into Harry Potter, it's like putting yourself under a love and power spell. Like that's what it is, right? Like this is good magic. Like... <laughs> You know, so, and it can definitely cause some magical transformations in life. So, um, and, and, and also thanks to all of you for sharing your time and your presence and your wisdom for anyone who might watch the recording, who may not know us or anything else. Like we're here because 
strangers care and we're all on this pilgrimage from ignorance to understanding in all things and as we figure things out we want to pass it along to help out others on their journey in any way that we might be able to do so so you got this you got this i love it i love it let's do go team on three fist bump group hug we're out okay wait everybody ready here we go one two Three. Go team! Go team! Go team. Go team. <laughs> I love you guys. Have a great love week. You guys, you too. Bye. <laughs>